Hello everybody, it's me Lamani, and today I want to show you the best solo way that I think you can get gypsum so that we can get things like obsidian and um, topaz gypsum. We're going to go for emerald and diamond and this is going to be a really quick route for all you solo players out there. It's either solo players, people who don't have a lot of time to play, or those people who are struggling to find a way to get obsidian and topaz quick enough or they just can't get a group. Something like that, because I know me, I haven't really been going for obsidian and topaz just because it's kind of a pain. But with this little route we're gonna show you, I'll give you the full path that you can take to get these really quick, to get those expertise increases up before the January patch comes. And I'll give you a couple options if you have a little bit of extra time in your day to keep going for gypsum to get more expertise increases. So right now, we're gonna focus on the diamond one first. But before we get into that, I just wanna say, Thank you for all the support. Please keep doing that weird YouTube stuff. Like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell, tell your grandma, your grandpa. I appreciate all of you. Follow all the socials that'll be linked. Discord, uh, Twitch, we stream Monday, Wednesday, Friday around 10 to 10.30 a.m. Central Time. And we'll be live today. Uh, Twitter, TikTok, all that stuff. And I have a Patreon if you wanna support me directly. Now, with the holiday event being in, we have Winter Convergence Festival, meaning we have a diamond gypsum. That's the only way to get diamond gypsum. This will be replaced and we can kind of fill this in as other holiday events come because they will inevitably be here. But for now, we still have time on this festival. So what I'm going to do is I would start my route with the diamond gypsum and we're going to be able to do this in under an hour and get all these. So for me personally, I think this is going to be the best route because we're going to end up in Ebon Scale. We'll start in Cutlass and I'll run to this tree and I'm just going to teleport to whatever is probably cheapest Azoth cost. And I have a house down here, so it's pretty fast. But so I'll go for this tree and I will get my diamond gypsum here. And then we'll just wait and we'll pick it up and then we'll teleport. Okay, what's cheapest? 100 and 100. So I'll just probably go to Winsburg just really quick. Azoth's pretty cheap anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Um, we'll do this. And the big thing is I want to emphasize this is going to take us under an hour. And that being the reason is because Obsidian Gypsum has an internal cooldown. At least we think it, it should be around 20 minutes. When I was doing testing for this, it was about every 20 minutes I was able to get one. Now... The big thing is, with that obsidian gypsum, I feel like a lot of people just aren't able to get it because when you're doing these elite trains trying to get other things, you aren't getting credit, it doesn't always drop. But specifically for this run, the elite mob we're going for is actually a silver. And he drops, he's level 59, and he blows up because in the patch when he was tuned, he was actually double nerfed. So they did a lot of tuning stuff, they changed things, but this guy in the past was a level 60 elite and kind of a pain to kill. You can also drop a Jewel Crafter shirt too, by the way. But he was a little bit of a pain, and yet he still dropped Obsidian Gypsum, but they changed his loot table. Now, he drops Obsidian Gypsum even though he is silver, right? And there's not a lot of mobs out there that still do that and that are super easy to kill. Typically, you need a group, and that's why I think this is super nice for the solo play. And so here, we're just going to go to the last tree, and then you can craft your Diamond Gypsum if you want. Um, totally up to you before you leave, but so we'll just run over the tree. I bought a house in Evans scale too, so this is really fast. If you have houses here, it just makes the route that much better. So we'll grab this one, and then we can craft the gypsum here. That's what, what kind of why I like did it here. But the other reason is that we're going to fast travel deeper into Evans scale. So I can go here, and if I want, I can just craft this. Oh, that's my emerald. That's another one we're going to be going for. So you're going to have to have a 200 skill, but we'll have options for that. Now what you'll do is you're going to teleport to Lover's Shrine. So we'll go over there and then we'll run all the way up to Sky Song Crypt. And we'll do a little rotation, get our Topaz and our Obsidian there, and you could get your Emerald there too, theoretically. So let's do it. Now, one of the big gypsums we're gonna be getting is Emerald. So something you can do is on the way over to the Crypt, there's a ton of herbs that spawn. So like maybe if 200 harvesting is your only thing you have maxed out, you could just keep grabbing herbs on the way and it's still pretty fast and you could get your emerald gypsum that way. I'm gonna suggest cooking, I guess two, if you really wanted to, you could lumberjack these trees out depending on how fast that would be. But I just wanted to mention, one of the big ones to get solo is the emerald and I don't think people realize how easy it is as long as you have something like 200 cooking and 200 cooking is extremely easy to max out. That's why I'm gonna suggest it and I'll talk about that later. But regardless, if you wanna optimize your route or even just get some extra gold, you can sit here and gather while you walk up to the crypt. So keep that in mind. Now, I'll be back once we get over there. All right, gamers, so here we are at Sky Song Crypt, and I'm gonna show you, this is the first guy we're gonna be hitting. We're going for Obsidian Gypsum. He is the guy that drops it. So like I'm gonna show you here, he is 
pretty soloable. It might take you a little bit of time, but he was nerfed in the last patch, like double nerfed. So look at this. I'm just sitting here with the hatchet. I'll outlive it. We're just chilling. My boys over there are going to help me out here and just let me solo him. But look at this. Look at how easy this is, especially if you're a healer. But even if you're a DPS, you'll be able to solo the majority. Again, I'm not even pulling out the life staff at this point. They're going to join in at the end here and just get some credit. Thanks, boys. ST Forge and Arrows. But we're sitting here and our Obsidian Gypsum would drop if he died. I'll show you a drop where it does confirm the drop. But you can solo him very, very, very easily. Now, the big thing is that he has an internal cooldown timer. It seems, just through some testing, it seems that there's an ICD of about 20 minutes. So what are we gonna do in the meantime? Well, if this ghost would get off of me, actually, I would pop my Topaz Gypsum Potion, and we're gonna go for Topaz Gypsum Potions or drops in the meantime. So we can go here, and while we wait for him to respawn, we're gonna run over here. There's another named mob. And so you can pull massive packs, especially if you're running with a hatchet, it's gonna be easier to pull packs. But we get our topaz in the downtime. This guy respawns super fast, super easy to solo. And we'll sit here, we'll pull him. If you're pretty fast at this, you can go pull the other named elite mob down low because there's more people, more damage. But the big thing is that run something that does nature damage, maybe run a hammer or something because you're gonna to wanna to increase damage. I'm not running my void gauntlet right now just because I want that little damage bonus from the nature. So I'll just sit here, again, barely does anything. This guy can drop Topaz, and all of those ghosts will drop Topaz. So we'll just keep hitting him. Again, I don't really need to heal. I'm taking my time on this one, apparently, because I just can't swing. We'll do that. We'll just kill him quick. And there's our Topaz Gypsum. And now while we're doing this, we'll rotate back up top. And by the time we rotate back up top, the big guy should be respawned. I might actually miss this kill here. Hopefully we don't, but you can... Also, pull those other ghosts while you're waiting and pull them to the front of the church. They seem to have started him. He just respawned. I just missed it. We'll get a couple ticks in with the life staff. Maybe get the obsidian here. Been doing a little bit of farming. Technically, he could drop a topaz as well. Still no obsidian, but I will show you a clip right after this of that obsidian drop just to confirm it. And there is a topaz gypsum confirmation off of this guy. So we'll take that, still waiting for Obsidian one, but we have the Topaz secured from him as well. So that could be another reason why you might just wanna farm the big guy and not even bother going over there. You can still get Topaz Gypsum farms. That's why it's important just to keep killing him in between. You never know what you're gonna get. And that confirms my Obsidian Gypsum drop from that boss, just so that you know it drops for sure. And again, I named a little ice gauntlet there. So once you're done, what you're gonna do is teleport to your nearest home, wherever you wanna go, wherever you would craft some food. So I'm gonna head over to Ebon Scale, see you there. All right, so now that I'm here, the last thing we're gonna do to get another quick gypsum is doing our emerald. Now, a lot of people are kind of put off by emerald because it requires you getting an aptitude container, but doing cooking is insanely easy. I've actually been working on some of my trade skills, you'd be proud, but I have cooking at 200. Now, leveling cooking is insanely cheap. I did 150 to 200, under a thousand gold, super, super easy. But the best way to do it is we're just going to craft some hearty meals. You're gonna need a tier five food, three raw foods, and a seasoning. So look around, see what's cheapest for you. So I'll just show you my market, we'll run over there. Typically you're gonna see that your tier five food is gonna be like string beans or rice are gonna be your cheapest ones. So let's just check on the market. Rice, these are the ones I look for. <clears throat> 49, that's pretty high right now actually. String bean. 44 a little bit cheaper and then the other one i go for is pork belly so 44 and these are even cheaper now the magic number you're gonna have to hit is around i just do 120 to be safe but it should be like 104 i think if the math was done right now we're gonna go some raw foods that are cheap we're gonna take pork and so i said 120 we'll just buy 120 Red meat is another cheap one. And again, 120. And then the tier two fish fillets are pretty cheap as well. Yeah, we'll do these. I could probably find something cheaper, but for the sake of content, it is only 15 gold. And again, we're doing all of this by like 100 gold max. And then we need a seasoning. For seasoning, you can use honey if honey's cheap on your server. So why not use honey here? It is only three cents because people really put it down there. 
I should have enough. If I buy both of these, and I'll just buy like an extra 10. Otherwise, again, find cheap seasoning. Peppercorn is probably pretty cheap. That should put me at a right number. I'm pretty close to an aptitude container anyway, so it doesn't matter, but this will be a good number. You'll do this. You'll come over here, and another thing you can do is then just sell these hearty meals, all right, or use them for PvP. So we'll put in our tier five. We'll put in one of our raws. We'll put in another raw. We'll put in another raw, and then we'll put in our seasoning, and then we just craft. And don't do over this amount because if you do get an aptitude container and you do end up getting a second one, it won't give you both. So you'll do that. And now here we are. I got a cooking aptitude. I'll get my container. Didn't show the emerald because I already got it, but you'd get an emerald from that. And then as you keep going, doing this every day, you'll get these aptitude containers. And here's the stuff you would expect from them. You can get recipes. You can get pigments. Pigments are big. They can make you some money. All kinds of stuff. Azoth, great container to keep going for so if you just want to keep pushing aptitude on these get them higher and higher and higher get the highest tier ones i don't even have those yet it is free gypsum so now what we do once we get all done with it since we're in a place like evan scale this is why i like evan scale i can craft my gypsum here i'll go down to the forge and i will craft my gypsum i waited all day to do this just for this video don't worry and so now i have my obsidian i can craft i already crafted my diamond and we'll just wait this takes forever emerald and then you can craft whatever you would like and there's our topaz so we have all four gypsums and again if you aren't familiar with the system check out my youtube video on the gypsum and the casts and then i'm going to go for my jewelry now those are the four you can get with very very limited gameplay time but let's say you have some extra what else can we do what would i recommend if you have a couple minutes here and there a really easy one to get is the citrine you run a quick arena uh, I would highly suggest going to Eden Grove and doing the Eden Grove one. You wouldn't even have to run through anything. That's the difference. Sure, the mob is a little bit tougher over there. The boss hits a little bit harder. The just mechanics are annoying, but it's just run up to it and do it. The other two, you have to clear entire zones to get to. So I wouldn't suggest doing that if you're worried about timing. What else? I would say portals would be your next best bet. This is still a solo thing that you can do. You could run through with a quick group so maybe if you're not looking to group up with other players and just do a solo thing there are plenty of portal groups running around constantly just join up one there's one in shattered mountains always um going over in reek water ebb and scale everywhere and everybody needs portals so everybody's constantly doing them this is something you can really do as a solo player if you're not looking to group with people and then other things you can still technically do along the solo bounds um ruby ruby would be a fantastic one just queue up for an opr if you don't have a ton of time, these can run a little bit long. It depends. PvP is always fun. So if you've got that extra time, go for it. They can last as long as, I think my quickest one was seven minutes. They can be up to like 40 minutes, right? So it depends. If you got that time, definitely go for it. Super easy, super quick. And then the last one I would really suggest going for is the Sapphire. Now, just like the Citrine, this would require a group. So if you're not looking to group up at all, don't worry about this one. But running an expedition, let's say maybe on the weekend you have some extra time bang out a couple expeditions these do stock up so i did have like two earlier today i haven't ran an expedition in a second but you can stack these up if you can get a couple throughout the week and just let them sit so when you're on that limited gameplay time you can get one of these crafted in addition to the rest so that would guarantee you in this video craft the topaz the diamond um the obsidian and the emerald Additionally, if you're not looking to group up with anybody else, your next best bet, if you want to just keep running solo, you could do Amethyst and you could do Ruby. But then if you're looking for group kind of boss content that you can do pretty fast, Citrine, arenas take 10 minutes max. And then if you have some extra time, run a couple expeditions and get your Sapphires. So with that being said, I hope I helped. If you have any other questions, feel free to drop a comment. Um, I'll get back to you. You can join the Discord. If you want to connect with me, send me a DM, ask me a question about literally anything you want. Follow us on Twitch. We'll be streaming today, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 10 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. Central Time. Uh, again, I can answer questions in there. You can just chat with me, hang out, watch the gameplay we'll be doing. We'll be playing some PTR, doing some stuff with the company. Um, otherwise, follow the other socials, Twitter, TikTok. And again, subscribe if you haven't and ring that bell for me. I'd really appreciate it if you did all that weird YouTube stuff where you liked, commented, and subscribed. But nonetheless, I appreciate your support. 
And on the topic of support, if you'd like to support me directly, I do have a Patreon. And on that Patreon, I do early content releases. I ask for ideas, input, just check on people and see what's going on, see what people are wanting to see. So as always, thank you to everybody who supports me there. So thank you. Jacob, Dougie, Shane, Gill, Anna Reno, Jero, Nathaniel, Thonar, Joseph, Tarvi, Generic Guy, Ronan, Ralph, Bob, Florian, Blue, Blue Beagle, GTBJ Kitchens, Dexter, Rich, Rob, Josh, Michelle, Nade, Rich, and Peter. Thank you all for your support, but thank you to every single one of you just for watching this video. As always, thank you for watching, thank you for listening, and thank you all for being you.